Hey guys. So since my Instagram live is so off of the timetables of most people that either follow me or normally attend my live streams, I am going to do a reading for everyone. Um, this will help to keep it cohesive so that whoever listens later um, can really benefit from it because when I'm sitting waiting for people to join, hi Maddie, um, and people ask questions, it can become very disjointed, which is fine when there are a lot of people and um, there's like a flow to it. Um, so that's how it's gonna go today and um, hopefully it serves all of you who listen later on. So um, the reading that I wanted to do today, the question that I was asking is, um, what are some of the lessons that we can focus on this month? And how can we begin to change how we view our own story and um, make it something that serves us more? So I'll be talking about these things as I get into the reading, most likely. That's how readings normally go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the cards shuffled and ready for us. Hope you guys are doing well today. I know I haven't done a live for two days. Um, I've been busy. Um, it's really nice being at this retreat, um, but it's also busy if you want it to be. You can do lots of classes and um, really do healing. It's a healing center. All right, here we are. Cards are ready. Actually, I think I'll do it one more time. Yes, okay, yeah. So here we go. Okay, already we've got some really st strong cards coming in. And the first card that's coming in is the Sun card. And the Sun card here is in reverse. Generally speaking, this is about maintaining a positive attitude through whatever comes our way. It's about reacting to circumstances in a powerful way instead of a weak way, about knowing that we have choices and about um, trusting that when we make those choices, um, we can execute them in such a way that we gain from them. We gain from the decisions, we gain from the situation and this isn't to say at the expense of other people, um, but it is a lesson around maintaining a lot of personal strength and really personal power. So personal power is really interesting. It's about um, the solar plexus and right now, sorry, that's what's coming up. Uh, let me clarify that. And um, the sun card, of course, has this beautiful yellow color. It doesn't always refer to the solar plexus, but here, this is what's coming in for me. Um, so solar plexus is really important um, to understand. So solar plexus, let's just say, is about power. And power can be used in many different ways. And there are many different ways to exercise power. Um, right now in the world, when we think about power, we generally think about the use of force. And I think I discussed this a little bit recently, um, but power is also the power and energy behind something. So it could be behind words, behind a specific action, behind a person's eyes and the way that they look at someone. Um, a lot of our intentions are made manifest because of the power that's behind them. If we simply say something, but there's no power behind that phrase, nothing is really going to happen. It's kind of like the idea of affirmations where if you say positive things all day long, I'm so happy, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. But really like the internal dialogue is like, I'm pretty unhappy or life sucks or whatever negative dialogue we have going on. Um, the negative dialogue is going to win because that's what's going on on a more consistent basis in that underlying structure. Um, we're not practicing that I am happy um, affirmation with a sense of mindfulness and with putting power and emotion and feeling behind it. Um, so this is about really maintaining a positive attitude no matter what's coming our way and um, noticing where and when we have power and how we are utilizing it. The next position um, of cards that are coming up, I actually have two cards here. So I'm just tuning into them right now and 
the, the first card is the Queen of Wands and the second, one, the second one is the Chariot. So I'm going to address these separately. The Queen of Wands here is again about power. Um, she's about creative power. She's about charisma. She's about um, enjoying the, the sense of power that your body has. She's about um, enjoying the sense of power that you have in your relationships and in your interactions with others. And that, that isn't a negative thing. Sometimes we think of the word power and we think it's negative, but um, just having the power to attract the kind of friends that you do and the kind of affection that you do, that's a, that's a great power, but it could be through how kind you are and how your personality resonates with someone else. Um, it's also about really stepping into a sense of creative strength and um, a sense of absorbing strength so that other people can feel it coming from you. So one thing that's really important to do all the time um, is to make sure that we are keeping our body in a non-stressed state. Um, when we're in a stressed state, we actually weaken ourselves. Um, whether in the presence of other people or just on a personal level, we feel weak, we can feel low. And so it's important to do things like power poses in the morning. It's so simple to like brush your teeth and just walk around holding your arms up and like, um, you know, just holding, holding yourself in a really stretched out position for like two minutes a day. It's very easy and um, it lowers the cortisol in our bodies and um, raises something that I can't remember um, that makes us feel powerful, that makes us feel strong, that makes us more of an alpha. Um, and this is just gonna help us to, um, to really send out those good feelings. Um, so the next one is the chariot. So I do wanna tie these together because they came out together and that's really interesting. But the first thing that I wanna address here with the chariot is that here we're being shown that we have choices of direction. We have choices of, um, here I'm really feeling that it's around an understanding of which way we can go in our minds, which way we can think, um, which, which way we can choose to be in our lives. And here it's like very clear cut black and white paths that are spreading themselves out before us. Um, it could be, you know, um, go on this trip or go home. Um, for me, those are two very clear cut decisions that go in, in two very different directions. Um, they're going to take place in my mind first as decisions. And that's what I want you to think of. I want you to think of things that are really showing up for you that are very clear cut decisions. They're really going to form your path for the month. So these lessons are about how we can um, grow and change during the month of February, how we can develop ourselves, and how we can change our relationships to our stories and how we can change our stories um, to make them more powerful for ourselves. Because that's all it's about. Um, there's a giant butterfly that just landed near me. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so so with the chariot um, and the queen of wands, what I'm really drawn to talk about is getting a sense of how you feel in your gut when you make a decision, when you decide which path to take, when you see in front of you these two options. I really want you to sense into your belly and, and go, okay, how do I feel with this decision? And if I, if I make this decision, if I step forward like this, what what feelings and um, what kind of, I, of a vibration will I be carrying, will I be stepping forward with that other people around me will hear? Um, because when we, when we make decisions and we feel powerful in them, we send that out. We, we send out, people see it in us. They go, wow, you look great right now. And like, you just look so happy or you look so centered. And it's because we are taking steps that are, that are out of our own personal
personal power and toward our own personal power. Um, and therefore, because they're for our, high, our, our highest good, um, they are for the highest good of everyone around us because they're seeing that. They're seeing us exercising that state of power, exercising that um, ability to make a decision, to go for something and to make it happen, to make it manifest into reality. So sometimes um, we forget how much power we have to create things. And the Queen of Wands here is saying like, Feel it in your body, feel it in your mind, and it will be created in the world because that imprint is just going to be transferred into the real world. If you want to think about it in like non-metaphysical terms, just think about when you really feel dedicated to a goal, you work hard for it. You definitely want it. So you sit down every day and you work on it or you get up and you run every morning because you want to like do this 5K or 10K or whatever. And because of the feeling in your body, that's what gets you up out of bed. That's what gets you sitting in that chair doing that work. Um, on the metaphysical level, um, when we are in line with that, that wonderful feeling of what we really want to create, what we really want to be in line with, we are creating, we're creating a vision that is able to manifest itself much more easily than um, if it were to just show up in our lives. Um, and we're able to sense that we are working with the universe, with our guides, with our angels, with God, whatever words you use to describe spirit or the universe or whatever you believe in that supports you, that um, that drives you, that you feel is connecting to you as someone who's living life, someone who's creating life. As a creative person, I really like the TED Talk by Elizabeth Gilbert from, I think a few years ago, um, where she talks about, um, Oh, she talks about like the muse in the walls coming out and like helping you to create something. And there's just, it's a really great talk. You need to, you need to see it if you haven't yet. Um, just Google it. TED Talk, Elizabeth Gilbert, um, creativity. Um, but the idea here is that there is something else around coming in and infusing you with creativity. This helps you to not put so much responsibility on yourself to create. It helps you to, when you believe in something else, you're able to do the work you need to do to make it happen, to create it, to fulfill the dream that you're envisioning from a much lighter state. When we put all this pressure on ourselves, like just think about the typical artist, and this is what she discusses in her talk. So the typical like vision or view I can't think of what word I'm trying to say. Um, so in the past, um, we like have this idea of artists as like perpetually in like shame or difficulty or depression. You know, we have like the story of like Van Gogh cutting off his ear and other artists drinking themselves to death or killing themselves or just, you know, really, really tough things. And, the, and a lot of that comes from the pressure of creating, of, of pulling something out of your body and making it into whatever it's going to be. And Elizabeth Gilbert says, what if we approached art in a different way? What if we approach, approached creating in a different way? What if there was something that was actually around that inspired us? And then she talks about how, I think like the ancient Greeks, believed that there were like that that a muse was an actual spirit that like lived in the walls of a room and would actually inspire the person to write a poem or make a painting or whatever um and it didn't so so the, the artist wasn't responsible for creating the art the muse was and it just it took a ton of pressure off that's my point so whatever you want to create, like don't put so much pressure on yourself, like, oh my God, I have to do this and it's going to be so difficult. Really 
rely on just getting the feeling in your body by asking spirit, by asking the universe, will you help me with this, please? Like bring that feeling in, bring what I need, be that extra inspiration that I need to just make what I want. And I'm not just talking about art. I know I just told you a lot about art, um, but I am saying like creating your life. Sometimes you just need help and spirit is all around to help you, I think. Um, and you know, if you don't believe in spirit directly, I think it's really fine. Like, I don't think you have to believe in anything to like have a great life and to even use a lot of spiritual concepts. Like I said earlier, where you just have this feeling inside you. So you get up every morning and you go for your run or you sit down and do your work. When you hold in an intention that says I'm pulling in extra energy from the world around me to help me create, it'll happen. It'll really happen. So the next card that I'm going into is the Nine of Wands. Okay, so the Nine of Wands is coming in for a big thing. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the card. I'm showing you this card because this is a little bit different from a standard interpretation, but it's what I'm seeing and it's what I see often with this card. So in my view, this card is telling us that it's really time to take a lot of our past, a lot of our experiences, a lot of our um, past education and projects to pull everything together, put it all in a pile, and kind of get rid of it. Often this card is about experience, relying on it, using all of that knowledge and wisdom and gifts and power. But here I'm really seeing that there's so much we need to get rid of in order to fly, in order to be light enough to fly. So here I'm feeling that if we can just sever certain projects and eliminate certain ideas that we are still attached to, that we still believe are so important to hold on to, or else who are we without them? And here I am leading, going into my letting go of your story. Otherwise, who are we without them? It's really time to get rid of them, to literally burn them. You can write these things down that you want to eliminate from your life and then have a fire. Like, I don't know where you are, but if you can like have a bonfire with your friends, then do it. Or if you can have a fire inside in your fireplace, in your little cottage, chalet, regular house or apartment, cool. Um, otherwise, be really safe if you want to burn it. Um, you can also bury things um, and it'll send like any negative energy into the earth. If it's something that's like litter, then please get it out of the earth. But um, there are lots of ways to really release things with great intention so that they truly leave our lives. So I'm just drawn really quickly to talk about how this might be related to emotional experiences. I know I said like education and all these other things and like these ideas that we might need to like shed are really important. But this can also be emotional things, old relationships, and old ideas around those relationships. And in my view, that's really important during the month of February because as an American, we celebrate Valentine's Day and a lot of people get really attached to Valentine's Day and like what it means. So we just attach a lot to it. So get rid of all that. Let go of everything and just like start fresh. Like we're really like wiping the slate clean with this card. Um, okay, so now that you've seen this card enough, I'm going to put it down. Um, so now I want to talk about letting go of your story. And let me just see if there's a card with us to guide us, maybe. Um, so often we have stories that we tell people that really make up like who we think we are, who we think we can be, 
um, who we think we're going to be, um, how we can be those people. And that's fine. It's normal. We all have them. And the first time that I was introduced to the concept of like letting go of my story or like changing my story, I was like, excuse me, like this is my past. I need to talk about it. Um, but it took me like a year <laughs> to like understand what this person was saying. And I would like run across the concept in different books when I had never even heard of the concept in my whole life. Um, so let me tell you what this is. Basically, you know when you like meet a new friend and you're really excited about them and you really connect with them, so you start talking. And maybe you'll have like, you know, four hours where you just sit and talk to each other and you tell them about what happened to you when you were five and then when you were eight and then when you were 13 and then you, when you were 18. And like, that's the story that makes up your life. And then there was college and you were still like dealing with all those other things and that's what shaped you and now here you are today. Isn't that a great story? And we, we tend to like get lost in that story and we get locked into it. What I mean is that we see it from the same lens. So let's just give that lens a word and I just wanna give it a word that is like totally general. So let's just say we are um, living life through like the victim lens. We will like tell our story. Well, this happened to me. And when I was five, this happened to me. And then when I was eight, this happened to me. Can you believe like all of these things happened to me? And then when I was 13, this happened to me too. And then when I was 18. So like that's my story and that's what makes me. That's what made me who I am today. So when we talk about letting go of the story or changing the story, the first time a healer said this to me, I was like, excuse me, this is my life. Like I need to talk about my life. So I totally didn't understand what she was saying. And it took me like three different books that explained the concept to really understand what it meant. And I think it was just because no one really explained it well. So I hope I explain it well. But basically, you can still tell the same details of the story. So what, what I would do, because you know, I like to write and I talk about journaling all the time. I would write down that story and then I would cross out everything except for the event. How each event is in the sentence. I would cross out all the words, but then just be like, this event that happened at five years old. This event that happened at eight years old. This event that happened at 13. And then I would transfer it over to a new piece of paper. I would write it out again, but I would try to tell it almost like a story with a lens of power in some way. So just for an example, my story used to be like, I'm so accident prone. Like I won't even go in the ocean because if there's a shark, they're gonna get me. Like, like that's how accident prone I am. Um, that was my story for a long time. And, I, and every age that I just said, it was because something physically happened to me at those ages. And this healer was like, you really gotta let go of this. And I was like, don't even say that to me. But when I really looked at it over the next few months, um, I just started to change the lens that I was viewing it with. Because I actually realized, first of all, that I was pretty grateful for most of those experiences. None of them were terrible and like the worst thing ever and like whatever. They weren't, they didn't need to be told with this heaviness that I would tell them with. And so instead, I literally changed the story. As, like, I, like I literally wrote it out and changed it into a story that then later became my story. So now, you know, if I'm talking to people about, people will be like, well, how did you get into acupuncture? How did you get into Chinese medicine? And I'll say, you know, I had a lot of pain in my early life and it extended into my 20s and nothing really seemed to help with this pain. Um, and then I started finding these alternative things. And I'm just so grateful because I've really liked to help other people feel better. Most of my life, I've always had that sense and I've always wanted to be a healer. And I realized that acupuncture gave me this great avenue into um, expanding my healing work, expanding my 
um, ability to heal others in the world. It's not just spiritual healing. I can do physical healing as well. And like I have, you know, access if I want in the future to work in hospitals and do this. So my point is like I could tell the story from a sense of power instead of a sense of weakness like I would before. I would be like, I couldn't go in the ocean and like I won't get on a motorcycle and like I won't do this and I won't do that because I kept repeating this story to every new friend I made or every new acquaintance. I would just be like, this is the stuff that happened. Um, so when we begin to change our story, so this nine of wands is inviting all of us to let go of past experiences that no longer serve us. And it could even be jobs that we don't want to have anymore, that we want to cut ourselves free from. It could be ideas that we were taught either in our early education or even in our later education that we are just holding on to and keeping too much a part of us, like too much, um, like letting it really rule, rule our lives or rule our sense of being and um, who we can be in the world from that education. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example because I feel like I have one, but I feel like it's kind of um, personal. Let's just say I know someone who is a very, they're a very critical person. Like I really feel that they could actually be a critic that writes reviews on books and movies and whatever. But their education, in my opinion, their, their inner critic is so strong that they hold themselves back. They cannot do anything in the world right now. They can't seem to move left or right without, without extreme pain coming up. And it's not physical pain. It's like a psychic pain in their psyche. Um, it's very... Uh, it's very painful because they believe everything I do is just going to be crap because most art in the world is just crap. And like, I don't know, only this person is great and that person is great and whatever. They just, they're so hard on themselves and will, will not create until they get past this, until they let this story go, until they let that education that, that drove into them, that inner critic. And a lot of it is the way that they were raised by their family. A lot of it is the way that they grew up and saw their parents criticizing themselves. And that's even harder to release. But this person could probably really benefit from these lessons here. Um, and hopefully they will one day um, because they have so much potential um, and so much personal power that if they would just exercise it, they could do amazing things, really amazing things. So I asked for a card to come in to help us with this letting go of your story. And um, the Nine of Pentacles came in. And I love it, first of all, because the Nine of Wands was here. And now the Nine of Pentacles is here. And the Nine is like getting ready for an ending. There's like this turning point, this about to drop thing. And... I really feel that a lot of what we want to literally drop this year is going to happen in February. And the seeds that we're planting are in February. And right now, all of you who listen to this will be gathering resources to help yourselves with whatever you're doing. That's what this Nine of Pentacles is, okay? So this Nine of Pentacles is basically saying, like, look how powerful you are. Look how much you have. Look how much you have at your disposal. And it's also saying, look at this future self that you want to be and be it right now. Okay? Embody that feeling. Like when we were with the Queen of Wands and we talked about that, like having that feeling and projecting that vibration out. The Nine of Pentacles is one of my favorite female figures in the deck because, first of all, she just feels... Well, first of all, she feels rich to me because she's rich. Like, this is all her money. In some decks, she's, like, standing next to a castle. And she... But not only is she rich in money, she's rich in education. She's rich in, like, manners, I want to say. Like, her 
like like etiquette, like her way of being. She's rich in her relationships. There's no one with her in this card, but she is an established person with a full life around her. There isn't anything missing in the Nine of Pentacles. And she's also rich in wisdom. So this bird here is, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember right now. Um, but basically it represents um, a god that like guards the supposed like book of tarot that came from Egypt, which isn't even like what, where we believe tarot came from anymore, I think. But um, just based on, I don't know, scientific uh, or I mean historical information. But um, that God is believed to, to, to guard the wisdom of the tarot, to, to hold it. And she's holding that bird on her hand. And that bird is like a confidant, like a friend. It's someone that can advise her and, and be there for her. Um, and she just has this sense of ease in the world. And so this is telling us this is both what we have and what we're capable of reaching toward, what we're capable of going toward and, um, and maintaining. So here we can like pull in this dual sense of, of accomplishment of I've already accomplished this goal, whatever it is we want to make or create in our life right now, the person we want to be, etc. cetera. We, we can just pull this sense of I'm already there into us and just layer that feeling over our bodies. And that will help us to hold those feelings that we need to pull out and um, utilize when we are exercising decisions this month and um, maintaining our power in social situations, um, good or bad. It doesn't mean that you're, that when I say maintaining power, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're like fighting or arguing or um, trying to hold power over others. It just means your personal power, how people see you, how, pe how you interact with others, how you hug them and greet them and treat them. Um, I also just want to say that I'm getting one more little message with her and that is when we let go of our stories, we make our lives more beautiful. We are more powerful, we are richer, we are wiser, and we're more graceful. I really want to say we're more graceful. I think that's beautiful because how wonderful would it be if we could just begin to rewrite all of the stories that are so painful for us into stories that are actually powerful for us? Because we can't change the events that happened, but we can change our relationship to them, we can change our perspective on them, and we can change the way that they inform our lives. And that to me is a lot of grace and power. So to sum up, positivity, grace, and power for this month. Those are our lessons, those are what um, energies are really gonna help us, those are the qualities that we can pull in to create, to remake, to step forward differently. And I just want to say that when your decisions look black and white, It's not saying that one is a wrong one. It's not saying that you're making a mistake. It's just asking you to feel in and sense what will be best for my highest good right now. Okay? All right, well, it was good um, giving you guys this quick reading. Um, I hope that this benefits all of you that listen later. I see only a couple of you join. That's what I was thinking would happen because this is not my normal, um, my normal live time. And Maddie, I just saw that you said, I need to start a podcast and thank you so much. I was just talking with someone about that today and um, it is in the works. So um, thank you. And I appreciate you being an extra little voice from spirit today to just bring that right in. So thank you. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so that's, that's everything I have to say today. Um, I should be back tomorrow. Um, I am here in Thailand for another like week or so. And then I'm back in Switzerland. Um, remember that if any of you need readings or anything, you have to message me because my calendar looks like I'm uh, not working. Um, but I can still work from here and from everywhere. I've just got to know that you need a time available and then I can open it up in the schedule. Um, I hope you all are doing well. I hope that you are feeling the sense of the energy that's been winding down since I would say last night um, all over, but not feeling a drop in the positivity. That sun card came in because that's important right now. If you're feeling a little negative, go on a walk, go on a run, go for a workout, stand in your power poses, do something, um, but don't let anything get you down right now, okay? Wind down and, you know, rest and recuperate, but, um, but stay positive and happy, okay? I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great everything. Bye.